Hey everyone, this is Cal from Dirty Weasel. As you know, The Outer Worlds has been released to the public for less than a week, and the modding community is already hard at work improving this amazing game. This video covers over a dozen .ini file tweaks to help improve your experience. All these fixes are standard tweaks available to the Unreal Engine 4, but there's a lot to go through, so let's get started. Alright, here we are at the desktop and the first thing we have to ask ourselves is did you buy it from the Epic's Game Store or did you buy it from the Windows Store? And that's going to depend on where you actually find your .ini files to make those changes. I bought it through the Epic Game Store and that's going to change where I get it. And I'm going to show that to you first because that's the example I have. When you open up your system tray, you'll find your local disk and this is not where you keep your games. You can see I keep my games someplace else. This is your local disk and you're going to open that up and you're going to go to users and the users will depend on a couple different things. Inside of this, you'll find your username. That is this default name, whatever your name is for the computer. That's what it's going to be. Open that up and you'll look for app data. If you do not see app data, go to view and you're going to click hidden items and you want to be able to show the hidden items. And I also just suggest clicking on file name extension because that will be important later on. But make sure you have that and you should see app data. Open that up and you'll look for local and then scroll down and you'll look for Indiana. This very strange file name is where they keep all the configuration files. Open that up and you'll see saved and then config. Inside of config, you'll find Windows No Editor, and inside of that, you find all of your .ini files. Now, this is for the Windows people, the people that bought it on the Windows Store, and you'll find it under the same app data that I showed you before. Inside of app data is where you'll find the following file. I'm going to read it out to you and print it at the bottom of the screen so you can see it. It is packages backslash private division dot the outer world windows 10 underscore hv 3d 7 y fbgr 2 rp backslash local cache backslash local backslash indiana backslash saved backslash config backslash windows no editor and that leads us back to where we are right now and you should now all be in the same spot as i am right now now let's just talk about some of the basic things first. We're gonna slide this over so we can actually open this up and see all the other windows. One of the first things we're gonna cover is mouse acceleration. You remember mouse acceleration is the faster you move the mouse, the more the cursor moves or your reticle moves on the screen and that's not what we want for a shooter. We wanna disable mouse acceleration. So what we're going to do is I already have a copy over here. And so I can copy and paste this in. You're going to open up your INI file. I'm going to open it up with Notepad++. Of course, I just have regular Notepad over here so you can see the difference. Open that up with Notepad++ or a regular uh, Notepad if you've got it, and you'll look for IN, input.ini. And you'll notice it is completely blank, and that's because that's the way the file came. I did not make any changes to this file whatsoever. So what you want to put in, and this is for my notes only, disable the mouse acceleration. You're going to put in a new header and that's gonna be bracket engine dot player input in bracket. And then the following two lines, B enable mouse smoothing equals false and B view acceleration enabled equals false. We're just gonna copy and paste those right in. Now I'm going to copy and paste. Now, I will put all these tweaks in the description of this video so you can go ahead and copy paste them directly in as you see. Now, that's all you need. We've now disabled mouse acceleration. Go ahead and save that file. Now that you've done that, you can close it and we can double check that it was actually done by opening the input.ini. And sure enough, there it is. It is exact duplicate of what we have up there. So goodbye that, that is now done. The next thing we're going to cover is to disable the splash screens in the beginning of the game so you can actually get started faster. You can see once again, I have my notes, disable intro videos through the config, and this is what we're doing. So in this case, we're looking for the game.ini, and you can see it is located right there, and we're going to right click once again and edit with Notepad++ or Notepad, whatever you have, 
And you can see that inside of this, you will find it already has a script engine put in there, script engine settings dot project settings. You do not want to change this. You want to come down and we're going to add a new line and that that's what I've done right here. So if you need to end at the end and either tab down or use your arrow keys, get down at least one space. So there's one space between the bottom of that one and the new one. And we are going to add a new line that is for the bracket and it's bracket backslash script backslash movie player dot movie player settings and bracket. And then the three lines that you see here, B wait for movies to complete equals false and B movies are skippable equals true. And then startup movies equals blank. So we are going to copy all four of those lines, copy and paste them in. Now you won't have any starting movies in the beginning of your game. So you can get right into playing and without having to wait for those splash screens to come in. So once again, we're going to save it and close it and we will double check that it was done in the game.ne you can see it now has all of that information that we just put in there and in addition to what it already had and you should be good to go now the final section is quite involved and is the longest section we're going to have to deal with today and that is all of the engine tweaks now engine tweaks i've got it already pasted it out here we're going to try and open this up so you can all see it because there's lots and lots and lots of notes here about what we're going to be doing. Try and get this all to fit in one screen. It's going to be tough, but we'll get it. Now, in Engine Any is where we'd be making those changes. If we open that up with Notepad++ once again, you can see that we have already a bunch of things in here, and that is perfectly fine. That's what we want to see. This is what yours will look like ahead of time. All this stuff is what we're going to be adding in, and we're going to try and squeeze as much in there as we possibly can so we can see everything. Now, once again, we need to add a new bracket. In this case, it is bracket system settings. So let's just start with that. And as we go through, I will explain exactly what we're doing and each category and how it works. So the first one is our default feature anti-aliasing equals two. You see the notes here, forces of specific AA or anti-aliasing type. Zero would be none, one would be FXAA. It is untested for this particular game and temporal AA anti-aliasing, which is the default. A can see equals two means that it is the temporal AI being the one that's implemented. So let's put that in first. That is the standard feature. We'll just copy that in and paste it into the next line. And there we go. Now, of course, it now spread it all out. Now, the next one has to do with the quality of the anti-aliasing. This is once again, uh, fixing some of the anti-aliasing. These are your little jagged lines for a very small line. So you have smooth lines throughout the whole thing. There's also another one called max anxiotrophy equals 16. This improves the quality of the anti-aliasing that you see above it. This is a post-process anti-aliasing. The system that I've got right now can handle anti-aliasing quality of six, but if you want to reduce that by half, you can, you'll get a little more performance out of it. Max anxiotropy can be reduced also by half to eight, and that will decrease the quality of the anti-aliasing, but once again, that's okay. This is very subjective. So for me, I'm going to try it at six and 16. I'm going to copy both of those in on a new line. Right there. Already start my new next line. Now we get into temporal AA, cat mull ROM equals one. And this sharpens the TAA, which is in the line one up here, the temporal AA. This sharpens the TAA filter kernel. And this should replace some of the sharpness that we lost by enabling temporal AA. And then you have temporal AA samples equals two. And this minimizes the jittered positions of the flickering of the TAA for a fluid camera movement visuals as achieved by frame weight. So both of these, once again, affect TAA. And of course, the last line that we're going to be adjusting is the temporal AA current frame weight equals 0.12, which is referenced up here. And this helps prevent TAA ghosting, faster visual responsiveness, and turn down the reduced flicker that you see by 
increasing the, t the normal post-process anti-aliasing. So those three need to go in as well. Copy and paste them in. Next line. This is screen percentage. This is the native TAA under strong suspicion to cause microstatting when set above 100. So this is a safety thing. We're going to try and reduce some of those micro stutters that people are reporting in game and try and get that to fix. So we're going to copy that one in and paste it into our edited engine.ini file. Now, next up are one, two, three, four settings, all for Tone Mapper. Tone Mapper allows for more vivid and powerful colors and it costs for necessary brightness increase. And that's relatively normal, but you can see there's some other fixes here that the community says will actually improve the tone mapper of the game. So we're going to put these all in. If you want to know what, more about what tone mapper does, that's what it is. The next two lines have to do with chromatic aberration. If you're not familiar with chromatic aberration, is a relatively new feature added to a lot of video games. It actually smooths out motion of objects or smooths out the objects of when in motion. But when you take screenshots, it doesn't look so good. And you can actually see why. It actually causes a fringe effect with blue and red pixels on the edges. It's very transparent, but you can actually see it. So some people are highly sensitive to these things. I'm not bothered by them, but I do know that it does cost performance to add all those little tiny fringy pixels on the edge of different objects. So we want to get rid of them. The first one is R scene color fringe max equals zero. This disables the chromatic aberration, greatly increase, increasing the image quality, also increasing performance. Whereas some of the other things, the tone mapper and some of the other things down below will actually decrease your performance. We're gaining some performance back. So, and then the second line is our scene color fringe quality equals zero because we don't have it anymore. We want to reduce the quality down to zero or it messes with its engine and disables the chromatic aberration. Once again, greatly increasing quality of the image. We'll just copy those in and there we go. Motion blur. We all hate motion blur. Motion blur, of course, is the blur added to when you move a, your mouse or you move very quickly through the scene and we don't like it. We all hate it. I don't know why they include it. It makes it, I guess, look a little more like real life motion, but it all bugs the crap out of us. And there's two lines to disable it. Both of them need to be in there. We're just going to copy those in and paste them into our edited engine.ini file. Depth of field. Depth of field will actually make it look a little more fuzzy overall, and it makes it seem like things are farther away and your focus field of your eyeball is naturally to focus on things within the center, but the rest on the outsides are kind of faded and or blurred out as it were. So that's your depth of field, but it does cost a lot of performance and it makes objects in the distance kind of look out of, I mean, out of focus, I guess, but it makes it look blurry. I and mean, a lot of people don't like it. I think the depth of field in this is actually harming performance quite a bit and actually makes it look less good. So depth of field equals zero, disables the depth of field. Let's cut that and place that in as well. The next two have to do with LOD or level of display in the distance. And you can see that these changes will actually increase the rendered di distance of static meshes. The max setting is normally 0 0.125. to five. This increases it to 0 0.35. So it's not a big increase, but if you think about it, it's close to about 45% farther out distance. This will decrease your performance a lot. The following one, foliage.lod distance scale equals five, increases the rendered distance of the foliage to minimize popping of grass and trees. So once again, even though we gain some performance up here by disabling motion blur, disabling depth of field, disabling um chromatic aberration we're now decreasing our performance a little bit and you may have to tone these down or you eliminate these completely these two lines if you find your performance takes a big hit but i'm going to copy these and place them into my edited any engine.ini file and a new line 
And the final one has to do with light maps. Light maps will actually increase the quality of your light sources in the game, and they will look more lifelike and more brilliant and generally better quality. So this is a decrease in your performance. So you have to keep this in mind. This has a on-off switch. So if you want to go back in and you find that it's too much, you would change it to zero and you would now disable the high quality light maps. But for us, we will try it at one and see what it does for performance. Copy that and place it in the final line. Now that for the most part is all I've got for right now. There will be more later on. I'm sure more people will, don't say that, will have more later going forward, but this is quite a bit. We've now changed three files in our configs. We now need to save the engine.any, save it, and we can now close it, and we'll close Notepad++, and we'll double check that our saves went in and everything is in there. So like I said, you may have to come back in and decrease the image quality of the process, the post-process AA quality, decrease it by half and see what you get, and the max anteriotrophy, depending on your computer, reduce that down by half also. That may improve your performance. Uh, leave the rest for the most part. Motion blur will increase your performance. Uh, getting rid of chromatic aberration will increase your performance. And then depth of field, once again, increase your performance. And then these other ones, you may have to go back and put it back to the, to the normal max setting of 0 0.25 in place of 0 0.35, okay? And then once again, the foliage LOD distance equals five. You may have to reduce that down and reduce it down to like four and see what happens as far as your performance. And of course, if you find the light maps, which can be quite performance heavy, if you find them too much, turn it back down to zero just by changing that one to a zero and you should be able to get back to normal and see how your performance is. A lot of this is tweaking and a lot of it depends on your computer. Of course, I have a very powerful computer, so I can test this, see how it works, and see what my performance is like. That's it for now, guys. I think that that's everything I know about the any files at this time, and uh, hopefully I'll be able to come up with more mods going forward for the Outer Worlds. My name's Cal, I'm from Dirty Weasel, and I'm signing off.